Thank you, Pravin. Good afternoon to all of you. Um, before I start, I would like to introduce uh, my head of department, uh, Professor Richard Liu, to welcome all of you. Professor Richard Liu, please. Hi, welcome all to NUS e Open House. My name is Richard Liu. I am the head of the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. I'm also a registered professional, professional engineer in Singapore. My colleague and I are excited to share the new curriculum in civil engineering. Our curriculum is offering a hyper flexible program, paving way for emerging subject combinations. Our program is quite unique and you may not be readily offered by similar department in other universities. Students can choose to specialize and go deep into certain topics and eventually register as a professional engineer or they can choose to go broad in engineering by taking a second majors or minors, solving complex engineering problems and therefore make them more employable. I'm sure you're aware of industry 4.0 transformations, how digital technologies and data are increasing shipping the way infrastructure environment is being built and designed. Our department is offering very attractive program to equip our students with the skill to integrate digital technologies to design, plan, and manage smart and sustainable cities. With this note, I call upon uh, Professor Pang Sutai, our Deputy Head of Academy, to share our exciting program in civil engineering with you. Thank you, Professor Liu. Um, let me share with you uh, on uh, civil engineering. Uh, we do have quite a number of exciting things coming out for this incoming cohort. So first, what is civil engineering? Civil engineers plan, design, create, manage a livable city around us. For example, the iconic structures that define our identity, smart infrastructures that connect us, nature-based solution for built environment, that address the issue of climate change. Technological solutions that ensure our island survival and green solutions that reduce waste and carbon footprints for sustainability. So why choose NUS civil engineering? We have uh, been consistently ranked very high and as uh, Recent as 2019, we are ranked number two in QS ranking. And since 2015 till now, we have been ranked number one in QS ranking for civil and structural engineering. Industry values our graduates. Students have often asked, what's the difference between NUS graduates compared to other graduates? And is NUS graduates more theory-based? From here, you can see that Industry value the training of NUS graduate. Below is the statistics that, is, that was um, re published only last week. So for NUS in 2020, you can see that our gross monthly salary for the mean or the 75th percentile, we are a few hundred dollars more than our peers from other universities. We provide the best civil engineering training to produce the best consulting engineer. And this is consistently uh, achieved through the years, ever since it started in 2013, when the Association of Consulting Engineers, which is a very prestigious award given out for the best consulting engineer of the year, we have been consistently getting our, having our graduates being in the top in Singapore. And you have probably heard um, from the Dean's presentation this morning, there's an exciting curriculum coming up with a new transformative curriculum, which is a truly multidisciplinary education infused with 21st century skills. Let me just briefly bring you through what that means. We have the common curriculum that will future-proof our graduates with 21st century skills. We have enhanced training for our graduates to be industry ready. We have revamped our major to position our graduates as future built environment leaders. 
And we have created a hyper-flexible curriculum that allows our students to pursue double majors and become one of the kind multidisciplinary engineers to solve 21st century complex problems. And what are the highlights that arise from, all, from this hyper-flexible uh, curriculum? We will be the only university in Singapore that offers civil engineering and architecture double degree program. So, NUS is the only university that offers both civil engineering and also architecture uh, degrees. And we are looking into having a pathway that students can get both degrees in about 4.5 years. Why do we want to, uh, to, to create such a synergy between both? I'll give you examples of two well-renowned innovators who have both civil engineering and architecture training. One is uh, Santiago and the other is Peter. And you will probably recognize some of the very iconic structures they are built around the world due to the fact that they are both trained in civil engineering and architecture and the industry do values engineers, civil engineers who are able to look at and uh, look at problems from both sides, from the engineering and also from more of the design in architecture. And with the new hyper-flexible curriculum, for a student in civil engineer who major in civil engineering, they can take majors in other disciplines, for example, mechanical engineering or electrical engineering, and they can take this major with, it, with their unrestricted uh, elective space. That means they can complete the double degree or double major, I'm sorry, double major within four years without overloading if they plan it well. And they could potentially qualify for two professional license. So it could be a professional license in civil and another, another professional license in mechanical or electrical engineering. Currently, you do not find such engineers, and we, but we do foresee that with the automation and digitization of the built environment, we need such engineers. And since last year, we have half out a, a, a curated a program, a specialization in digital urban infrastructure. We have seen digitization happening all around us. It's a key transformation area and it has been highlighted or has been uh, earmarked by BCA, the Building Construction Authority, that integrated digital delivery will be one of the main pillars for the built environment moving forward. So there, is a, there will be a high demand for such civil engineer, and it will be a high growth area for entrepreneurs in this field. So with this specialization, students will experience cutting edge digital design and management, and transform civil engineering with computational and digital technologies. And you can see that students are not only learning through the lectures and tutorials, we have students who are learning through games. And below are some of the examples. And you'll see that in, in NUS, there will be a, a good mixtures of projects, uh, hands-on experience, and on top of the lectures, tutorials, and also industrial uh, uh, engagement. Beyond that, we have also find pairings of the programs, which will have a good fit for students in civil engineering. So to create new breeds of civil engineers to lead in the built environment, examples, you can, students can have a civil engineering major and they can partner with, a, a, get a minor in infrastructure finance and management, which is rather popular and or a major in project management. They can use the unrestricted space to fulfill all this without uh, overloading their curriculum. Or civil engineering with a minor in urban studies and uh, or minor in architecture studies. With the curriculum space that students have in the unrestricted space, they could actually take double minors. Or civil engineering with minor in geosciences, or in environmental engineering, or major in sustainable urban development. There will be, we do foresee with the green plan that Singapore rolls out, there will be a demand for civil engineers with knowledge in both built and natural environment to build a sustainable future. So this will be a summary of some of the, the, um, the combination that students can have 
this is not limited to is not limited to this list. There are many others where students have um, a major pairing or even double degree. Beyond the academic aspects, students actually are engaged uh, is a, a, a enriching experience that goes beyond the academic aspects. Uh, our students, for example, they take part in the international building design competition. And due to the fact that we have both civil engineering and architecture within NUS, we are able to bring both students, uh, students from both sides together, and they will enrich each other in their learning and the mentors from both sides coming together. And this is shown in the result that has been achieved in 2020. Um, the students won the innovation award second prize and two merit awards in the competition. There are a number of global exchange opportunities. There's a student exchange program. There's the global exchange program uh, in the overseas college program where students can have experience in the uh, entrepreneur aspects. And our students, we do support ground initiative by the students. Um, for imaging, our students put what they learn into use, and you will see over here, this is a, a, a something that's gone on for two decades, where it's a ground initiative, where students go to overseas countries to uh, make use of what they learn to create sustainable development. So this is something being put into use or into practice based on what they learn, and they have been winning awards in the universities for the past two decades. We also do have modules where we bring our students overseas. This is one example where students go to Yunnan to help the village in the planning, to help them to, to, to create a more sustainable environment for them to be more connected also. And in terms of uh, career prospects, students can go into statutory board. There are quite a number of the agencies that employ civil engineers. For example, HDB, JTC, LTA, PUB, URA, and there are a lot of consultancy firms and construction firms, both local and global, that employ civil engineers. One common question that we do get is, is civil engineering suitable for ladies? I'll give you a, a, a few examples over here where civil and female civil engineers are, have been very successful in their career, ranging from their work in engineering design and management in PUB to project management in global construction firm based in Dubai to policy and planning in the uh, building and construction authority, being a civil and structural engineer in Sentosa development and also project management in property and infrastructure MNC. We do have quite a number of uh, scholarship award and bursary. We have a bursary that is uh, specially catered for civil engineering students. This is done um, through the kind donation from our donors. And this year, we have also created awards for incoming students. There are, there are three categories of awards, and in each category, there are quite a number of awards that we are giving out. And that is on top of the scholarships that are available. So there are a number of the public agencies, which I mentioned earlier on, that give out scholarship for civil engineering students. And there's also scholarship that are specially administered, given out to civil engineering students in the department, such as the Continental Steel Scholarship, Warhub Scholarship. Lastly, I do hope that you'll join us to build the future, to shape the world. I'll stop my presentation here. Uh, we'll be happy to address any of the questions that you have in the Q&A. So if you do have questions, please post it in the Q&A and we'll address those questions. Thank you, Tertai. We have uh, highlighted a few questions for you and your team. Please okay. go ahead. Uh, okay. I will probably uh, start to take the first question. Um, uh, I'll probably get my colleague, Justin, to answer that. Uh, is there a danger of being pigeonholed into civil engineering due to firms demanding more civil engineers that have masters as opposed to bachelor's degrees? And how can IDP be applied in civil engineering? Justin, please.
Sorry. Uh, hi, hi, Zidai. Yes. Uh, yes. Can, can, can you get camera on? Can you, could you repeat your question? I was, I was busy answering questions on the chat. <laughs> um, sorry. I'll just uh, repeat that. Uh, is there a danger of being pigeonholed, pigeonholed into civil engineering due to firms demanding more civil engineers that have masters as opposed to bachelor's degrees? And the second part of the question, how can IDP be applied in civil engineering? So maybe I'm not I'm not too sure what, what uh, you know, what, what maybe this, this is a... Uh, the understanding of what a pigeonhole uh, is, but I would say no. Um, <clears throat> I think that what we are offering as, as, a, as a curriculum, uh, this is actually offering us a greater flexibility, um, even at a master's level. Uh, we are able to move between uh, different roles, different, uh, different aspects within the industry, and even outside the industry as well. So I, I don't think it's a matter of being a pigeonhole, uh, you know, just by gaining the knowledge in civil engineering. Uh, whereas for IDP, uh, so IDP uh, in civil engineering curriculum, uh, there is quite a number of students. Uh, in fact, we, we do encourage uh, our students to take up the IDP program. Uh, it makes a very good, um, it makes a very good complementary program between the two, um, where students are exposed to not only civil engineering problems, uh, as well as being able to use design thinking to, to solve uh, the the uh, problems that, that occur in civil engineering. Good, thank you, uh, Justin. Since you are on the line, uh, probably I'll get you to answer one more question. Um, can you share more about the new specialization? I think that is the one that uh, attracts a number <laughs> of students in the recent, uh, or at least last year, we have a lot of, a lot of students going for that, which is the digitization in urban infrastructure. So, so yeah, this is a new, this is a new, newer um, specialization that we have recently just, uh, imp, uh, you know, uh, created within our department. Uh, this was actually to, to address a rising uh, need that we have been, we have, that we have been observing in the industry. Um, I think gone are the days where, you know, when we talk about civil engineers and, and you know, uh, students have that kind of image where, uh, we are involved in, in cement and mortar and, and all that kind of thing. Um, increasingly, we're seeing that a lot of um, civil engineering is actually moving towards a digital, uh, a digital frontier. So, so this specialization was actually to, to gear our students to be able to make use of digital technologies. We will make use of sensors, IoT, um, to, be, to be familiar right, in, in, a, in a digital environment and make decisions based on you know, the kinds of the kinds of inputs that you're getting from digital tools. Um, so what you're going to be doing in this um, specialization is that uh, we, we are introducing a, a set of um, a set of very targeted modules that would give our students an edge uh, in terms of how they would deal and how they would manage uh, digital data that's coming to them. Um, yeah, so, so we expect that um, students who, who come out from this will become um, specialists in, in dealing with digital data in a civil and civil engineering uh, environment. Thank you, Justin. I'll probably take on the next question. Um, would I still be considered for civil engineering if I have only taken physics at H1 level? Uh, yes, I think the admission criteria for engineering, which also includes civil engineering, are the same. You need to have a minimum of O level physics and then you can come in Depending, if you have a H2, you can proceed without a bridging module. You have H1, you may have to take a, a one or two bridging modules, depending on the discipline. Let me just move on to the next one. Um, sorry, Justin, since I think you are quite enthusiastic to, to answer some of the questions. What's the difference between civil engineering and a minor in civil and in environmental engineering as compared to just purely environmental engineering? So... <clears throat> Uh, it, it seems I'm the target bot today from for 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 the time. <laughs> um, well, well, that's a tough question to answer. Um, I would say it, it all boils down to a matter of interest. Um, with uh, with uh, it's it's a difference in terms of the depth of knowledge that you would uh, be able to go into because, um, you know, if you you taking a, a pure environmental engineering. Uh, which is a great uh, engineering course, by the way. 
uh, would give you a lot of uh, insight into how uh, you know the environmental engineering uh, industry is like. Um, with a civil background, it then gives you, uh, with a civil background taking a minor in environmental engineering, then this gives you uh, a scope in terms of both sides where you can deal in terms of both the, the, the design, the digital uh, frontiers in civil engineering, as well as right, maybe even uh, moving into things like sustainability, climate change, um, uh, that is common to both civil engineering and environmental engineering. So that would, uh, to me, the difference is more in terms of uh, you know the, whether you're interested in doing a breadth or you're interested in doing a depth uh, in environmental engineering. Thank you, Justin. I think we do have a one interesting question, I think, uh, which is one of the main uh, key selling point, which I'll give uh, Professor Liu uh, to address. Is double PE, uh, the PE referring to professional engineers, double PE for CE and ME slash uh, EE confirmed with the professional engineers board? Professor Richard Liu, please. Before we launch this uh, hyper flexible program, the PE board have been consulted together with the deans of uh, engineering and the department head, discussing the possibility of uh, having a double professions. Now, our major program, for example, in civil engineering, enable you to sit for the PE fundamental examinations. Similarly, in the mechanical engineering, for example, if you finish the major, you're able to sit for PE fundamental exam. So if you choose two majors, for example, you are able to sit for the fundamental exams. This path, this gives you the pathway for you to do further registration. To do a registration uh, as a professional engineer in Singapore, you need to have accumulated at least three years experience, especially a design experience. Then you allow you to sit for professional interview and then they grant you the license. So theoretically, yes, it is possible that you can get double registrations. Um, another related uh, question uh, which touches on the architecture aspect, which uh, I hope Professor Liu can address. How does civil engineering differ from architecture since it was mentioned that civil engineers also design buildings? Yes, uh, civil engineers look more on the safety aspects of the infrastructures of buildings. So it is our responsibility to ensure that whatever you build is safe to construct and then later occupy. Okay, so we are more on safety. All right, so we are doing more of a mega structure, big building, all this thing. There's a lot of occupants inside that. We cannot afford to have any error in the design and during the executions. Architect, if you want to go for architecture, a very important aspect is appreciation of art. You need to understand art and you need to be artistic in doing your design. Of course, they also look at the materials on the sustainability aspect and then the greenery, for example, aesthetic part of it, how to build it into the design. So architects and engineers actually work together to ensure a building or a project become more livable and, uh, and uh, more sustainable. Uh, this is an area that we are going to go in deeper into it in future. Uh, so that, in the interest of time, I think we should stop here and I see that your team has already cleared all the incoming questions. Uh, once again, thank you Tsudai and Team Civil Engineering. You guys are going nowhere because the next session that is going to coming up is part of Civil and Environmental Engineering.